first slide has the very famous Pittsburgh Railways logo on it, uh, uh, something that uh, I saw probably for the first time when Muni uh, repainted uh, uh, its car number 1062 in Pittsburgh Railways co colors. Uh, that car had been uh, uh, representing Louisville, which got 25 cars, but never ran them. Instead, uh, when it came time to remanufacture re the car, uh, Muni and everybody else decided to represent a city that operated 666 cars. So the slight has been corrected. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, what I'm going to do is show a number of uh, text slides, and I'm going to do about 20 seconds on each co uh, of those so you can read it, and I'm going to not talk while, while you read. No, I'm not absolutely sure if it was an aroused public that uh, prevented Skybus from happening, but uh, I'd like like to think so. Okay, we're dedica I'm dedicating the show to the late Z Steve Z Zabel. Uh, I believe he was an ER member. I never knew him when when he was living, but uh, his photography lives on. Uh, and I've accumulated many, many of uh, Steve Zabel's slides, and uh, they've been a big help in uh, uh, making me enjoy Pittsburgh. That is, if you have the right fear. And a transfer in your hand. Okay. These uh, uh, schematic maps were drawn by uh, Kenneth Springer, uh, he wrote a couple of books about Pittsburgh, and uh, I uh, got my trusty iPhone now to take these pictures of his maps. Um, the uh, basic east-west lines uh, ran on Liberty Avenue, and then out Fifth Avenue, Forbes Avenue, and uh, uh, um, went to the east side. South side lines use the north-south streets, Grant, Liberty, and Wood. Uh, the north side routes uh, switch back uh, around Liberty Avenue. Uh, and I'm going to present lines and pictures of the lines in downtown Pittsburgh in numeric order. The way Pittsburgh Railway set up its uh, route number system, and they were one of the first in the country to do so. Uh, uh, basically, they uh, went from the lowest numbers uh, and did the counterclockwise uh, uh, setup with with the cars going over over the. Point Bridge to Sewickley and uh, other Western suburbs uh, uh, gradually getting higher. The South Side routes were um, in the 40s and 50s, and all the East Side routes in the fifth from the mid 50s up all the way up to 98. Uh, uh, here we have 
um, a Fritz Panzi uh, photo of a, an eight Perrysville car, number 1677. Uh, the 1600s were uh, the last air electrics uh, that arrived in 1945, 46. Uh, Pittsburgh Railways uh, divided its fleet up in, up in with the uh, lower 75 numbers always being Westinghouse controlled. Uh, uh, Westinghouse, of course, uh, was headquartered in Pittsburgh, but the last 25 or so uh, were always General Electric. And they were the ones that they, that Pittsburgh got rid of first. This is a 1677 is a GE car. Uh, 22 Crosstown uh, uh, went went through from the north side to the south side. Uh, or, uh, actually, I don't know if it went went to the uh, south side. I don't remember seeing any pictures of it. This is this car is on Stanwix Boulevard, which is right practically at the point of. Uh, uh, the Pittsburgh Triangle downtown to another 88 Frankstown car uh, uh, going all the way out to Frankstown. There, there are very long routes going east. There's another Crosstown car. Uh, yeah, the 88 Frankstown slide got out of order. Sorry. Uh, now we're on uh, doing a, a 39 Brookline, which was a south 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 side line. Uh, uh, 42 Dormont goes on going over the Smithfield Bridge. The building in the near background is under construction. Peter, uh, apologies for yep. interrupting. Just had a, a couple of requests from folks. If you could move your Zoom cursor or your um, mouse cursor off of the uh, photograph. Okay, uh, yep. I can do that. Yep, just a little more and then it's off. Um, yeah, there you go. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, there's another shot of the Smithfield Bridge. This is a very interesting bridge. It's kind of an Reverse arch bridge. Uh, I've never seen any other bridges like it anywhere in the United States. Uh, 44 Knoxville was a south side line. The uh, uh, clock here uh, and the gantry that's supporting it was demolished in the, after this picture was taken. Oops, I'm going too fast. 48 Arlington was another south side route. Went, went over the hill and of through the Mount Washington Tunnel. 50 Carson Street, a south side route, didn't, didn't go through the tunnel. Instead, it went along the uh, south bank of the Monongahela River for most of its distance. 53 Carrick was a uh, south side route, one of the last uh, non-current uh, routes to be uh, abandoned in 1971. 73 Highland, a west side, an east side route. Uh, uh, 85 Bedford, another east side route, the domed, Structure was the Civic uh, Auditorium, Civic Theater. Uh, it was built in 1961. Uh, it was finally demolished around 2009, I believe, uh, after it had been, after it had sat uh, unused for many, many years. Uh, car 1731 later. Uh, gave up its parts to uh, 
uh, build one of the new 4000s that were built in the 1980s by PA Transit. Uh, okay, here now we're done with uh, uh, Pittsburgh Railways cars. Now we're going to look at uh, the remaining routes uh, under PA Transit. Uh, as you can see, uh, uh, they have been repainted under the influence of Harold Geisenheimer, uh, who became general uh, operations manager in 1972 and uh, decided that the cars would really look nice if they were painted different colors. Uh, in, this, in this way, he kind of preceded Muni in its color schemes, but each each car had a, a front end around the doors painted a color. The middle section was painted white. The rear section was paint usually painted the same color as the uh, uh, front of the car. Not always the case, so. Uh, the car in the background is similar, except that it's painted red. Uh, here we are on Grant Avenue. This is a uh, an outbound uh, 42 slash 38 Beachview Mount Lebanon car. Had a different route from the uh, other other routes that serve downtown Pittsburgh from the south side. Uh, this is looking north on Grant, uh, another 48, 4238 car. And same, same direction around First Avenue. This is around Third Avenue. Uh, here's, here's a Geisenheimer influence car with different colors on both front and back. Uh, uh, another card, we're now around Fifth Avenue. Uh, these, these were uh, 1600 series air electric cars that got renumbered into the high 1700s uh, by PA Transit uh, around 1972. Uh, you can see, you can see uh, this car with the green end is probably a, either a 35 library or 36 great car, uh, which takes a longer Grant Liberty and Wood route to circle around downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, now we're in the hotel district. Uh, now we're, this is Liberty Avenue, uh, southbound uh, 47S. Uh, in, in 1983, PA Transit changed the numbers of the south side routes from the 35, 36 to 47 uh, with a, an S de designating the ultimate destination this one's going to South Hills Village, the car behind is probably going out to Library or Drake. Uh, this is a, uh, we're on Wood Street, uh, southbound, outbound uh, 35 Drake car, 36 Drake car. Uh, still on Wood Street, uh, renumbered uh, 1600. Uh, I don't remember the numbers of all of them, but uh, I do remember a few. Uh, this is uh, still on Wood Street around Forbes Avenue. And as you can see, the car is looks like it's it's either packed or the uh, press passenger in the front doesn't want to move away from where the motorman is. Uh, 
as you can see, many very interesting. Hey, uh, so, sorry to interrupt, Peter. Uh, we had a question in the chat. In one of the previous photographs, you showed a PCC car with a panograph. And uh, yes. uh, somebody was asking, what, why was there a panograph instead of a pole? Um, uh, in preparation for light rail service, uh, Pittsburgh converted its uh, overhead wire system to uh, panograph operation because uh, the LRVs did not use trolley poles, unlike Philadelphia. Okay, so here we're still using trolley poles here. I'll go back to uh, here. Here's a car with a with a panograph. Uh, this is one one that was numbered uh, uh, with a forty seven S route number. So they they had been they had converted to panograph operation before they changed the uh, route numbers. Okay, moving moving back. Okay. Now we're turning from Port Pittsburgh Boulevard onto the Smithfield Bridge. Uh, and I don't want to talk about the that Neoplan bus that's in the background. Uh, the less said about it, the better. Uh, this is a uh, shot that I, uh, I'm, it was a regular sh shot, it was kind of early morning. Uh, I made it a glowing edges, a uh, high, high dynamic range shot. And uh, I, lately I've been tweaking uh, a lot of my images in, or in, in the uh, guise of improving them, whether you like them or not, uh, enjoy them anyway. Okay, here's 4002, one of the first uh, cars that were built by PA Transit using parts from uh, retired 1700s. Uh, same Westinghouse controls uh, in typical uh, acceleration ride, which I thought was quite interesting. Uh, now this is this is a an inbound 4238 car that uses Smithfield uh, as far as 7th Avenue and then makes a right turn and goes to Grant for after two blocks goes south on Grant. Uh, you saw many cars uh, using Grant Avenue. There were 4238s. Uh, this is also on Smithfield. Oh, uh, let me go back. This car, 1745, was later re, uh, rewired by PA Transit and became one of the four Super 17s that outlasted uh, all the others after 1987. Uh, I'll, I'll explain what happened uh, later in the program. Peter, uh, sorry to interrupt again. I uh, had a question from uh, someone asking what software you use to create the uh, HDR image. Uh, I use uh, Photo Matrix Pro. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, here's, a, here's a pair of 4238s. Uh, turning on to Smithfield, back on to Smithfield, actually, you know, f uh, from uh, Fort Pitt Boulevard going in the opposite direction of the other cars that you saw. You know, crossing the Smithfield Bridge, 1734, has Geisenheimer uh, influence in pink. And uh, in this in this shot by Steve Zabel, uh, it's using a trolley pole. Uh, a few few cars were painted in PA Transit's first corporate livery of gray and white with a maroon stripe. Uh, not not all of them did. 
uh, okay now uh, we're on the south uh, so on the north side of the Smithfield Bridge uh, crossing the bridge uh, uh, nearly all the Steve Zabel photographs were done with trolley poles or taken during the trolley pole era uh, when when you see shots of mine there were uh, trolley poles were had been discarded and every every car was using pantographs 1771 you'll see many different paint schemes of 1771 throughout the show this is uh, uh, at the PNLE station on the south side of the bridge a uh, uh, car had just come through the Mount Washington tunnel. This is at PNLE station going the other direction. Ed McKernan, uh, the dispatcher for tomorrow's uh, uh, trains uh, took this photo. Uh, this is this is a pull-in car. It's marked South Hills Junction, 17. 61 later got different paint schemes. Uh, it's the PNLE station again. PNLE had a commute service that lasted, uh, I believe, only until 1987. But anyway, it's a nice, nice shot of the bridge and downtown Pittsburgh. There's a car coming out of the Mount Washington tunnel uh, on the north side and shows uh, the UMTA sign that uh, for some reason they're uh, parallelograms. <laughs> Every city they use parallelograms for signs, uh, but it shows what's coming. Uh, this car has a paragraph fitted to it, but it's uh, still using trolley poles. Oh, uh, I might add 37 Shannon was a short turn uh, car uh, on the 35 and 36 lines for as far as Castle Shannon. Another show of a uh, shot of a couple cars with downtown in the background. Uh, Building that's under construction is, uh, I believe, Steel Plaza, but I'm not absolutely sure. This is last day of uh, uh, PCC operation on Carson Street. Uh, on the right side is uh, the uh, station square station of the uh, on uh, what became the subway route. Okay, this is the end of um, part one. So I'm going to have to, uh, okay, let me drag this over. So uh, my previews or, or thumbnails aren't showing. Um, North side lines. Okay, I'll let, let you read, uh, read this. Uh, uh, Especially no noteworthy is fine view. Probably the most interesting line that ever ran in Pittsburgh. I never, unfortunately, got to ride it, but uh, uh, it's it's legendary. It was, the the grade was so steep on fine view that when it was abandoned, they couldn't run a bus on it. So. Uh, uh, it went without service ever since. Okay. Uh, every, everybody ready for me to go on? I think so, yes. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. All right. All right. Uh, as, as I mentioned before, lower numbers start on the north side 
nor lower root numbers started on the north side and all north side cars had GE equipment. Uh, here's car 1686 on the six slash 13. Uh, it was a combined route. Brighton, Brighton Road and Emsworth were combined. Here's a, a, a charter car, uh, probably came from South, South Hills Car House for the charter. Uh, they didn't usually run Westinghouse cars on the north side, so this was a charter. Uh, okay. we're, we're on, still on uh, uh, 13 Emsworth. Uh, uh, Peter, my class just sorry, uh, sorry for interrupting. A couple of uh, comments. Uh, yeah. There were some questions as to whether or not any of the Pittsburgh PCC cars were equipped with couplers or MU equipment. And uh, Howard Stevens replied that no, there were never any MU cars. And then That's also, correct. we had a question from uh, Leonard uh, or note uh, just that the 22 Crosstown line uh, did not cross the uh, Monongahela River. Yeah, um, I didn't. Yeah, I did. I I didn't think so, uh, but I. I'm, uh, it, but it did cross the Allegheny River. And then one last question from Gregory Katz: uh, Were Pittsburgh PCCs air or electric cars? Uh, both. The six all cars from uh, one thousand through sixteen ninety nine, with one exception, were air cars. Uh, the one exception was car. 1600, which was only a one-of-a-kind car built built as an all-electric. It did not survive the Homewood fire in 1955. Uh, uh, the 1700s were all-electric. So this, this car here would be an air-electric. Okay, we're still on uh, uh, Brighton Emsworth uh, combined route. Beautiful houses. Uh, Brighton Road when when the two lines were separated. Uh, seven, 1790 was this picture was taken. Uh, says. Uh, 1964. So this is before six and thirteen were combined. Uh, this is a eight Perrysville car, uh, and that car line ran past Keating Car House. Uh, this car is approaching Keating. Uh, it's a Roger Puda shot. Marty Bernard allowed me to use some of his uh, shots that he accumulates from Roger Puda. This is a, a high floor uh, car that dates to about 1911, uh, made by Press Steel. Uh, Peter, uh, sorry to interrupt again. Yeah. I had a question in the chat. Uh, asking yeah. if Pittsburgh ever upgraded from trolley wheels to trolley shoes for their um, streetcars. Yes, yes, they did. Uh, yeah, the later later shots um, were using uh, uh, shoes. Uh, the earlier shots, you can see them using wheels. But let's, let's see, see if I can see. See, here's a here's a car with a. Uh, a uh, trolley shoe, uh, and uh, the, they the converted the shoes. But I, I do have uh, some some slides where wheels are used. Okay, this is an Andy Goddard collected shot. This is of uh, line Westview Bellevue. Uh, uh, and in it, you can see how attractive the 
private wireway lines were and uh, uh, how, how they were pretty fast, even in snow. But you know, it was a, be a beautiful collected shot. This is uh, Westview again, uh, with street running. Uh, looks like a well, 1963 Ford on the right. Okay, this is a, a Jones car. Uh, these ran last in 1952. This is on 21 Fine View. I believe it was on a charter, uh, either that or it's the last days of the line. Uh, and uh, this is one of my tweaked images. I used a uh, Photoshop old paper uh, uh, effect. So um, uh, make, make, makes the car look even older than it actually was. And this is at Charles Street at the north end of the 21 Fine View line. Another shot of 21 Fine View. This was a, a had to be a charter because uh, it's not a GE car. But anyway, this is one of the uh, cars with, with the one of the first cars in Pittsburgh with in uh it has a short trolley cowl uh split windshield which is uh uh the 1100s went to a single piece windshield uh oh uh, i'm sorry uh uh route signed window uh it was take this car shot was taken around 1959. It was these cars would be scrapped uh, in the following year. They were built in 1937. Okay, moving right along. Uh, another charter on the Fine View line. This is a regular service car on the Fine View. Uh, this is uh, the West Park line. Uh, look at that uh, well, 59 Plymouth with the huge tail fins. Okay, now this is a, uh, I can't make the uh, route number out, but it's uh, still on the north side. Okay, now we're going, going to go to the east side. Uh, and uh, Peter, sorry to interrupt again, but if you don't mind moving your mouse cursor off of the screen again. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, late, later uh, PA Transit renumbered one of its uh, 1600s as uh, uh, 77 slash 54 uh, to commemorate the flying fracture line. Okay, uh, here here we here we see uh, the various East Side routes. Uh, routes well, like the McKeesport line, East Pittsburgh, uh, 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 82 Lincoln, uh, uh, this is the Mahangahela River over here, uh, the line to Glassport, went an Aspen wall went all the way out, very long line. Okay, I'm moving the mess out of the way. And 
we will go to the next slide. This is the lineup waiting for the Pittsburgh Pirates to uh, end their game at the Forbes Field. Uh, this is uh, on the uh, 55A, uh, one of the lines that uh, went around 1963. Uh, uh, 56 McKeesport ended in 1963 because of uh, the city wanted to replace the Glenwood Bridge uh, that the line ran over. Uh, but they, they didn't want to put trolley tracks back on. Uh, another shot of the 56. This is a 1400 series car. The 14s and the 15s had windshields that were 24 degrees angled instead of the usual 12 degrees for air cars. Uh, actually, the appearance was made them look more like a Boston PCC than uh, anything else. Okay, I'm moving the mouse out of the way. Okay, it says here, here you can see, come on, here you can see the 1200s had the standard 12 degree angle uh, windshield. And I'm not sure, but this may be a trolley wheel. It was taken in 1963. It was uh, along, along the McKeesport line. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm catching up on my note pages, but very, very attractive lines. Uh, yeah. Um, Hey, here's the Glenwood Bridge that was replaced by the city without trolley tracks on it. It's another shot car just came uh, over. Here. Sorry to interrupt, Peter. A uh, question that uh, came in in the chat. Uh, do you happen to know if any of the uh, pictures you're showing of charters uh, date from 1962? Yes, they do. Um, this shot of uh, uh, 1738 that you see up dates from 63, but there were, I do have slides of 1962 chars also. Notice that the, the, this car does have a trolley wheel. So uh, this carbon insert uh, shoes came, probably came when uh, PA Transit took over. Okay, the, now we're on Route 60 uh, Kennywood. Uh, th this is a, a line that went very early. Uh, I think before before the 60s, but the, the, uh, this is a charter car and uh, uh, the motorman rolled up uh, Route 60 just for the heck of it. This is a Pitcairn, way, way east of uh, downtown Pittsburgh. Uh, and you can see the steel mills and uh, other uh, heavy, heavy uh, facilities uh, for manufacturing and the railroad. Probably it was in Pennsylvania. Uh, 63 Trafford Express. Uh, this is an 1100 series car. Notice the one piece uh, 
flow sign window, uh, uh, typical of 1100s, but with the short trolley cowl. Uh, this shot, 11. Uh, we, we just had a, a comment in the chat saying that uh, Pittsburgh never um, upgraded to trolley shoes. They always used wheels. Pittsburgh, n no, that's not true. Because uh, I remember seeing uh, uh, cars with uh, trolley shoes in 1970. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Hey, here, here's a car with a uh, wheel on the 60. Uh, this, this this shot was taken in. Uh, uh, that was taken in 1965. It still has a wheel. Uh, so this was after P PA Transit took over. Uh, but before they converted to uh, trolley shoes. The 65 Munho was a very, very important east-west line. This is passing Craft Avenue car house. This is a slightly uh, uh, high dynamic range image picture. Uh, it was kind of a dull picture to begin with. I to kind of brightened it with the high dynamic range feature. This is a Craft Avenue car house. Cars with wheels. This is a uh, 1700 was on a charter to stay. Uh, it's on the line called East Pittsburgh. I don't remember the number. And uh, on the 1777-54, passing a massive church whose name I don't remember. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not a church goer. 1777 uh, was the major cross town line went through Oakland, uh, Carrick, uh, uh, Bloomfield, uh, all, all the neighborhoods never entered downtown. Eighty eight Franks sound very important east west line seventeen twenty seven. Uh, was unfortunately uh, the culprit car. In sorry the, to uh, sorry to interrupt, Peter. Just had yes. a request uh, if you could go back to the slide of the uh, old car in the yard. Sure. Okay. All right. Thank you. Seventeen twenty-seven. Was the car involved in the runaway accident in 1987? I'll talk, tell you more about that later. Eighty-eight Frankstown passing Pittsburgh Hospital. Uh, this is uh, another uh, tweet photo. This is I I used. Uh, um, some something called uh, colored vintage colored pencil to d do this shot. It's a uh, it's on on the ninety four Sharpsburg line, which went around nineteen sixty. Uh, as you can see, uh, many Pittsburgh lines were single tracks with passing sidings and. This car is moving onto a siding. Uh, here, here we are. We're on on route in route to Sharpsburg. No, um, 
uh, we're on on route to Aspenwall, extreme eastern part of Pittsburgh. This is a nice elevated shot, but I, I have to say that the uh, scenery is not all that great here. Okay, this is a Glenwood car house. After Glenwood clo closed these, uh, the cars that were stationed there moved to South Hills. Uh, this is this was an even older car. Both of these cars, by the way, are preserved at uh, Pennsylvania Trolley Museum, uh, Washington, PA. Okay, that's the end of Northside. Now we come to the huge South Side. We'll get my mouse out of the way. Okay, South Side was um, the last vestige of Pittsburgh trolley service and still it's going. How strong, I don't know, but uh, it's still going. Okay, ready to move on? Yes, go ahead. Okay, here. Here are here's a route map of uh, some of the south side lines. The big the biggies were Shannon Library and Shannon Drake, which were extensions to Charleroi and to Washington, PA. Uh, we cut back to the current terminals in 1953. Uh, 36 Drake became the last PCC operated service in Pittsburgh. Uh, I'll tell you more about that later. But there were other lines like Heidelberg, Car uh, Carnegie, Brookline, uh, the 4238 terminated at Castle Shannon until it was rebuilt for LRV service and got extended to South, South Hills Village for the Drake Line. Another important line was the uh, 53 Carrick. There were two Carrick services, one via the tunnel, and the other that went over the over the, the hill. Uh, and and then there was a service on Mount Washington that was very popular. Quit in 1967. Uh, okay, moving right along. Okay, this is what the south end of the Mount Washington Tunnel looked like in uh, the early 1960s. Okay, let me let me find my notes here. The, the, yeah, the fir first slide was taken uh, uh, 1963. This is what it looked like in 1963. Uh, uh, it's been, been completely rebuilt. Uh, uh, it looks, you, you wouldn't recognize the place anymore. But uh, in 1963, it looked like it was coming into a forest. That's how how nice Pittsburgh lines were. Uh, 39 Brookline was a, a, a service that went uh, relatively early in the uh, PA transit era. Uh, it did not use either uh, uh, the Overbrook lines or uh, the Beachview line to uh, uh, operate. Here's, 
a car on the Mount Washington line. Pe people could ride, ride the Monongahela incline up the hill uh, on, and then come back downtown on the uh, Mount, uh, on the number 40 line. My thing out of the way is. is yeah, it looks good. There's another. Hmm? Looks good. I'm yeah. Sorry. No, it oh, looks yeah. good. Thank you. Uh, is the top of Mount Washington. Uh, on a clear day, you could be. You could see downtown Pittsburgh from here. Another. Another shot of the uh, Mount Washington line with an express service. Uh, the red color on the roll sign indicates express. This is a, a shot that uh, apparently I didn't resize. Uh, but anyway, it was on the 44 Knoxville. It was the line that uh, ended in 1971. One of the last three to 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 go that were not uh, uh, e either Beachview or uh, Overbrook. And here we are uh, on uh, uh, Warrington Arlington Avenue, coming up from uh, uh, Smithfield and Carson, climbing the hill. Uh, three cars uh, on a charter. Uh, first car is technically on the wrong route uh, because the 47 would go to carry be the tunnel. And this car is on uh, what would be the 53 carat, which uh, climbed uh, Mount Washington on Arlington. Here's uh, uh, another car that climbing Arlington, uh, 49 Belts Hoover was one of the last three to quit in 1971. And in, in here, I guess uh, the motorman has to wait for this rock to be uh, moved out of the way, or there might even be a paper bag. Further up the uh, uh, grade on on Arlington, single track. Now this shot is of a 44 um, line car at Bowsman and Knox. Uh, this is um, was a slide of a photograph that I took in 1970. Uh, and uh, it w wasn't an especially good photograph, so I I made it an oil painting use, using Photoshop. Okay, so fifty three carat lasted nineteen until nineteen seventy one. A couple couple old, of uh, sorry. Sorry to interrupt, Peter. Uh, a couple of yes. comments. David Wilson notes that the 53 ran up via Carson Street and 18th Street rather than on Arlington Avenue. Oh. And then uh, uh, Todd Minsk uh, asks which incline or what incline is in the background. In in the background here, in this uh, shot. I'm assuming in the previous. Oh, oh, so no. oh, oh the previous shot, that would be the Mananga Ilaha. Uh, incline. Uh, the Duquesne incline is further uh, uh, downriver. Thank you. But the, the Mon incline is the one that's the most popular. Okay, Here, here's the uh, terminal of the 53 taken in 19... Uh, uh, okay, I'm look, looking at my notes. Uh, Brentwood Loop 
1971. As you can see, the uh, the station house has been completely rebuilt. But this is taken. This is taken just before abandonment of the line. And also, these both of these cars are in uh, the Pitt, PA Transit first corporate livery. Now, now we're going to talk a little bit about today's services, and we're going to get back to uh, the Geisenheim era, which is uh, <clears throat> what I what I know know the best. Yeah, now you notice that I use the colors that are used by the current services. Red is a uh, beach fuel line to South Hills Village. Uh, blue is the uh, uh, Overbrook line to South Hills Village and silver is the Overbrook line to library. Uh, the blue line also served uh, most of the Drake line until that line was rebuilt. Here, here's a, a Kenneth Springer's uh, schematic map. Uh, beat, beat fuel line is on the left. Overbrook line is on the right. Uh, they shared the trackage uh, for about one and a half miles south of Castle Shannon and then split up again to Library and to Drake and uh, South Hills Village. Uh, here, here's what looks like with PA Transit. I, I I I show more detailed map maps uh, as as we go through the different uh, uh, sections of the south south side lines. This is a uh, uh, well, I can't I can't I can't enlarge this. Oh wait, okay. Whoops. Mm. Okay. Uh, this um, is uh, the, basically the area from around South Hills Junction, which you'll see uh, many slides of net uh, coming up. This orange line was Arlington Warrington that uh, 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 service was abandoned in 19, in 2011, but the tracks are still there for diversions and uh, necessary. There was also a subway spur to Penn Plaza or Penn Station. Well, was just, that was discontinued in 2007. Uh, you can read, read about it over here. I'll tell you more about that later. Hey, here's what coming out of the south end of the Mount Washington tunnel looks like today. And there's our our old friend 1727. The hey, Peter, um, just a, a quick yeah. comment. I'm here with um, Kristen Fredrickson from the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum. And she mentioned that on St. Patrick's Day for the parade, uh, they do still provide service each year to Penn Station. So the spur is still used once a year. I'll be damned. That's good to know. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. What's her name? Christina? It's Kristen. Yeah, they use that um, spur occasionally when buses can't make it through downtown. <laughs> Figures. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, there's one of those uh, parallelogram uh, urban mass transportation project signs. 
1727, as I mentioned, that was that was that was the car involved in the runaway accident in 1987 that led to the demise of most PCC service. I'll I'll, I'll give you the graphic details later. <laughs> uh, in the meantime, this is what this is what uh, uh, the junction looked like before uh, the wires were converted to uh, panograph operation. And then, uh, as you can see, it's all, uh, there's no, sur sur uh, it's, all, it's all just rails, no, no paving, no nothing, just a trolley tracks. This is a rebuilt Uh, 4,000 uh, built new by Pat around 2003 or so. Uh, this is what South Hills Junction looked like. Uh, this car is, uh, has just come through the tunnel, is going out to the library line. The building on the right, you know, were the offices of South Hills Junction. That building is now gone. So, so is this building on the left. Uh, and they did get a paint job. Now, this car, uh, although it's signed thirty signed for library, uh, it's not on the library line yet. It probably came over the hill. Uh, Arlington and Warrington. What uh, forty two thirty eight cars look like? Uh, their stop before they went towards Beachview, before the line was rebuilt, uh, starting in. Uh, 1982. Uh, this particular shot dates to about 1980. Uh, they had not yet put pantographs on the cars. This is uh, this is a car. Uh, this is car 1783, although it looks like 1733. Uh, it's running as a 49 line tour trolley. Uh, normally it would use a car number 1794, which looks like a riverboat, but uh, that car was uh, probably down. Uh, so they're using 1783 instead. Peter, uh, uh, sorry, just getting a request. Yeah. If you can uh, move your cursor off the off the photograph. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Four thousand one. Uh, 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 naked trackage. Uh, hill. Nice houses on the on the top of the hill. I wouldn't want to live there in case it, uh, there's ever a mudslide. But they they look nice anyway. Another shot of uh, South Hills Junction in the modern era. This is the house on the right that replaced that uh, older house. This is uh, before they dug up uh, uh, <coughs> South Hills Junction. This car is looping at uh, uh, from from the South Hills car car house onto the library and Drake Overbrook lines. There's a car coming uh, inbound uh, from either uh, come from the Drake line. Uh, and here you can see various cars in the car at the car house, South Hills tunnel car house. They, also called Palm Garden. Uh, 
uh, LRVs were running uh, as what they called station shuttles uh, until uh, the Beachview line reopened in 1987. Uh, they they ran these only only between uh, Station Square and uh, downtown in the subway. Uh, uh, they did not carry passengers out to South Hills car, uh, Junction. Here is a car heading out towards the Overbrook line. Oh, okay, you can see you can see the uh, platforms that are under construction in this shot. Uh, there's South Hills car house. Well, there's a snow sweeper. And this is a lineup of uh, cars in the first PA Transit uh, corporate logo, corporate, uh, sorry, corporate paint scheme uh, uh, taken by Joe Seda, 1970. Okay, now we're going to take a look at the Overbrook line. Uh, Overbrook line uh, uh, was where the PCCs ran after uh, Beachview was closed, closed off. They could only run on Overbrook. And uh, I've add, I've add, added some pictures at various stops along the way on on o Overbrook. Uh, like there, uh, I don't seem to put put the names of the locations in, uh, but I will describe them as I go along. Uh, the Gwenberry's up here, uh, Bonaire, uh, Smith's stop is around here, uh, Ansonia Trestle is around here where the line crosses busy Pittsburgh Road 51 and so forth on all the way up to uh, Castle Shannon. There's uh, for uh, about a quarter mile, the Overbrook line shares the South Busway. Uh, this is a car at Central Stop on the on the busway. Uh, this is at, at the end of this busway. Stop is called Overbrook. This is uh, Glenbury. Glenbury again. Okay, this is crossing Bowsman Road is one of my shots. Uh, this is coming into Bonaire. Uh, one of my shots knows it's, it's Panagraph operated. This is uh, at the end of the uh, Edgebrook trestle. Uh, Smith siding. And this is what, another view of Smith siding. This is a colored pencil shot, uh, high dynamic range. And you, you can see the dreadful condition of the Overbrook line track, uh, which eventually led to a shutdown. Uh, you see, See the box signals are protecting the uh, cars. If the way it would work is they there would be a, a distance signal 
uh, and then at the end of the siding, there would be a, a two aspects signal like this, this one you'd hear, see here, the lower light would be red, the top light would be green red if it's clear to continue or red over red if it's not clear, that means that another car is coming the other direction. Okay, now we're we're approaching. Uh, let me see if I can find find the notes. Where four thousand uh, one is located. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, yeah, some some of these Steve Zabel shots I don't uh, recognize the locations. Uh, so this this would be actually Smith siding, uh, a, a, a different view. Again, uh, Smith. a uh, single track here, another view of Smith. This is, uh, this is a uh, poplar. It was coming into Castle Shannon. This, uh, this actually got, the slide got out of order. Uh, this was Smith stop. The car, the black car on my right was my car, which I was driving across country. Uh, uh, has California plates on it. Uh, this is crossing uh, at Ansonia Trestle crossing PA 51, very busy uh, road called Sawmill, Sawmill Run Road. Uh, it is a uh, inner end of uh, no, the outer end of uh, uh, Ansonia Trestle. This is car 17. Wait, where did it go? This is car 1730. Uh, you'll see more pictures of 1730 later. Uh, this is. 1737, uh, in the last PCC corporate livery of 1990, uh, 1737 was one of the four Super 17s that got rewired and uh, continued in service uh, beyond 1987, but they were finally retired in 1993. Uh, that is a railroad, I don't, remember the name of it. Uh, one of you Pittsburghers would probably know the uh, name of the railroad. This is approaching uh, Linden Grove. Seventeen seventy three. is so this is Killarney uh, this is a uh, uh, Linden Grove going inbound Linden Grove going outbound Uh, and very much south of Ansonia, the line is completely double track uh, all the way to Castle Shannon. Okay, this is 412 is... Forty twelve is at Memorial Hall. 
uh, uh, coming into Castle Shannon. Uh, we we numbered sixteen hundred. Uh, now we come to the Beachview Mount Lebanon line. Uh, this line was shut down in nineteen. 83, I believe, uh, to be rebuilt as an LRV line. So uh, when when this line got shut down, uh, the remaining 1600 series cars, with the exception of two of them, were retired. Uh, they were still on the property in 1984. Uh, Okay, here's here's what the uh, uh, an annotated map of the uh, uh, the red red line Beachview Mount Lebanon with a lot more added locations uh, and, and such as Neild Avenue, Wenzel Avenue, uh, Clearview. Uh, Lasalle. Okay, here's here's an LRV and that's taken in 1987 uh, uh, at South Hills Junction Station. This, is, uh, this line shared a little bit of the South Busway, uh, maybe for about uh, less than a quarter of a mile coming into South Hills Junction. This is uh, uh, the first trestle on, uh, on the line at uh, Palm, Gu Palm Garden Trestle. Uh, this, this car had a very attractive green color uh, otherwise it was a, a, a Geisenheimer creation. Again, uh, 1769 69 is um, uh, this is at the outer end of uh, Palm, no, no, the inner end of Palm Garden Trestle. And the outer end of Palm Garden Trestle, this is, this is car 1730. This is the psychedelic street car. Uh, I believe it was designed by Peter Max. Uh, it was nicknamed Mod Desire. This is a car on, uh, we're now on the Dawn, uh, on the Brookside Trestle. Uh, this previous shot was a Dawn Trestle. Brookside uh, in uh, first corporate paint. An LRV at Pennant. Seventeen twenty nine uh, has the guys and I uh, look with the uh, added red stripes on it. This is Westfield, uh, Alton. Alton again. Uh, Alton again, snowing. Uh, this is Cape May Trestle. Uh, I should say it's now Cape May Viaduct. Uh, all the trestles were demolished and rebuilt as viaducts uh, for LRV use. 
This is Cape May Trestle. Uh, this car was take. This shot was taken in uh, of car sixteen fifteen, taken in nineteen sixty three. This uh, Steve Zabel shot in, taken in the winter of 1981. This is the, uh, the inner end of the uh, uh, the Cape May trestle. And still on the Cape May trestle. AD three. Um hey, now that we're now we're approaching Fowl Field. Uh, north, the south end of the Cape May trestle, foul field. Foul field again. Uh, here's uh, car 1777-54, the flying fraction. Uh, this is the commemorative car. It was originally... One. It was originally uh, car 1635, got renumbered in uh, 1972. Uh, Fowlfield Station, Never before seen uh, at the south end of the Cape May Trestle. Um, 1735, uh, now we're at Broadway in Hampshire, uh, another car right behind it, Broadway in Hampshire again. And now this this is a uh, shot at uh, Broadway Realty and Coast. Uh, what I did with this one, I made it, uh, uh, I used the Photoshop palette knife effect. Uh, one, of, one of my more artsy fartsy shots. Uh, we're still at Realty and Coast. Okay, 1733. Uh, 17. There, still at Broadway Coast and Realty. 1728 before it got repainted. Uh, was in P PA Transit Corporate Corporate Livery, uh, Alaska. Alaska again. Uh, this is uh, Pauline Avenue, 1746. Pauline, Pauline in the winter time. Um, and now uh, this shot is just below pa Pauline at uh, the Beachview stop, which is no longer used. Uh, this this is a shot taken on the first day of the return of uh, rail service to Beachview, Mount Lebanon, uh, and they brought 3756 
from the uh, P Pennsylvania Trolley Museum, put a paragraph on it, and uh, ran it to uh, celebrate uh, the, the life of the Broadway Beachview Line. It's a it's a Jones car. Okay, now we're at uh, Broadway and Crosby. Broadway and Shearus. Shearus, Neald yeah. Avenue. Neald Avenue was a um, cutback of the uh, 4238, but it was numbered 43. Uh, this is crossing Wenzel Road Bridge. This is a uh, glowing edges shot of uh, uh, the uh, short stretch of private railway south of Neald Avenue, south of uh, Wenzel, it's at LaSalle Street, coming into Potomac Station. Uh, Dormont Junction. Um, notice Notice the nice long tangent track south of south of the station. Uh, there was a siding here at the Dormont Station, Dormont Junction. This is at the uh, uh, south end of the uh, Dormont Junction siding. Uh, this car is 17, 1731. We saw 1731 earlier in uh, Pittsburgh Railway's livery. Uh, this car, uh, had, uh, I had a picture of it, had just been repainted, but then it suddenly got used for uh, rebuilding of... Um, uh, into a four thousand, so it it didn't last very long in in Geisenheimer livery. Seventeen nineteen. Uh, is that McFarland Road, also near Dormont Junction. Seventeen. Here's another shot of 1731. It looks just like it had just gotten out of the paint shop. So that uh, 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 Florence, uh, Mount Lebanon Boulevard Lane, oh, line 42, sorry. 1472, by the way, was on a charter, and that picture is dated uh, 1963. Mount Lebanon Junction. <clears throat> Mount Lebanon Junction again. Oh, wait a minute, no, this is at Academy, Washington Boulevard and Academy. Uh, there's Mount Lebanon Station. There was a short tunnel here. Uh, there's a switchback uh, track in the middle. Switch Switchback track in the middle. Uh, here's the Pink Beauty. Uh, this is at uh, Oakway, 
Here's a psychedelic car again at Clearview Loop. Scott Road. Uh, Arlington is a uh, uh, <clears throat> Photoshop uh, uh, glowing edges shot. Okay, now we're uh, from Castle Shannon, the three lines merge again. Uh, it's not always the case. There should be a period at the end of there, but there wasn't. Okay, now here we have a few few more added uh, locations. Uh, Mart Castle Shannon, I'll show a number of shots at Castle Shannon. So then Martin Villa is a first stop in PCC days, south of Castle Shannon, but it's no longer used. St. Anne's, Connor Road, Smith Road, uh, Washington Junction. Uh, so let's continue southward. Uh, approaching Castle Shannon Municipal Building. Now this this was um, was the was the next to the last corporate livery of a of PA Transit. A very attractive yellow and white car. Um, unfortunately, that did not save the car from retirement in 1987. Uh, but there were a number of cars that were painted that way. There's a, an inbound shot at Castle Shannon. The municipal building is not now torn down. There's a uh, old paper shot of uh, uh, a Steve Zabel photographs. Um, now this, what makes this uh, picture noteworthy is basically it was an old paper shot, but I uh, the car is in full color. Uh, I'll never tell you how I did it. Let, let's just let's just say that I have a penchant for doing things like that. Okay, this is where forty two thirty eight line cars terminated at Castle Shannon back in. Back in BCC days, uh, here's a LRV leaving Castle Shannon Station. Uh, here's an inbound car, Castle Shannon, with an outbound LRV in the background. Okay, this was taken in 1987. A lot as was renamed Overbrook Junction uh, rather recently. By the way, the, uh, the Beachview line curves to the right here, and the Overbrook line continues straight. Mrs. Martin Villa was a, a stop in PCC days, no longer a stop, but a very attractive neighborhood. Uh, 
That's not a very smart law. Montana. Who, who we are looking in this car is inbound approaching Martin Villa. Uh, this is the, this is uh, originally the both Shannon Library and Shannon Drake use this line to continue southward from Castle Shannon. It has been rebuilt for uh, uh, LRV use. This is St. Anne's School. St. Anne's School. This is what St. Anne's School looked like in 1980. And this is what it looked like in 1986. I'll tell you more about 1713 later. Uh, the Smith Road. Smith Road again. In LRV days. That's real. Smith Road. Smith Road is an inbound car there and uh, no RV, same location. This is Connor. Uh, substations being built here. We have a cemetery here. This is Washington Junction. This is where the library and Drake lines separated. Uh, this is what it looked like in. Uh, in uh, okay, the, this is what would it look like in 1980 uh, before the line, the junction was rebuilt, and this is what it looks like now. Uh, the there's a track just north of the station where cars coming off the library line can loop around and head outbound towards South Hills Village Yard. This is a uh, high dynamic range view of Washington, Junk of Washington Junction Station at night. Another car right in the background, right here. This is a car looping at Washington Junction. This is a this is Washington Junction as it looks uh, like now. Come uh, at at the south end. Uh, go back to what it looked like in the old days. Uh, <clears throat> Scar 1723 on the left was in the most last uh, PCC corporate livery. It, unfortunately, it did not survive past 1987 even though it was sure looks spiffy. Okay, now this shot, this was a terribly overexposed and blurry shot. Uh, and what I did was I darkened it 
uh, made it a high dynamic range image and then finally applied something called the uh, ripple, ocean ripple effect, uh, which in my mind improved the uh, uh, picture immensely. Uh, you may think otherwise, but that's that's life. Uh, a little mention of this is car seventeen thirteen, otherwise known as the terrible trolley, it was a, it's a painted the same colors as the Pittsburgh Steelers helmet. And back back in the old days, uh, uh, fans waved their terrible towels. So this is called the uh, the terrible trolley. You'll see more of this car later. Okay, now we come to the library line. I'll let you read. Let me. Okay, here's a map of some of the added uh, stop, a uh, picture stops. No for Drive, Pleasant Street, Highland Avenue, all added. Due to the PA transit map. No for uh, drive. There's a, a high dynamic range image. Uh, this is. Uh, Wait, let me get change pages. Okay. Uh, Pleasant Pleasant Street. Hillcrest. This is uh the character of the library line. You can see see how it uh, uh, has retained its uh, old Pittsburgh Railways character. Uh, the track is improved, but not 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 completely rebuilt as other lines have been rebuilt. So so it's it just is is a nice nice looking interurban line Highland Avenue Highland Avenue again Center Street Lytle, Lytle Street. We're we're in we're in the town of Bethel Park here. This is under the Monongahela River uh, Railroad Bridge, uh, just south of Lytle. Mesta. Mesta again. Uh, now we're at uh, uh, 
Schnauz Park. The south of South Park. South Park is a, um, a car that uh, has has a rather unusual paint scheme. See, we'll see more of those later. King School Road. It's one of my shots. Uh, going, going the other direction. Another one of my shots going the other way. Outbound. Simmons Loop. Uh, this is the terminal of the library line. This is car 1730 after it had had its uh, psychedelic paint scheme uh, repainted, paint, or I should say painted over. Oh, that, that's actually, it's, that's, a, that's not a Simmons loop, that's a Drake loop. Sorry, it's got out of order. Okay, anyway, this is also a Simmons terminal. Okay. I use the color blue uh, for uh, Drake line cars as well as for uh, Overbrook cars that go South Hills Village. Okay, here, here I have some extra pictures at Fort Couch Road. Uh, uh, there were some other locations on the Drake line, which I didn't fail to put in here. Okay, this is a, a car approaching Carswell. This is a Bethel Village Station. Here's, here's the junction uh, where the Drake line comes in from the left and the South Hill Village line continues to the right. Okay, this is uh, this scene and the next one are two two scenes along the Drake line, which is not rebuilt and abandoned in 1999. This is at, this is at uh, Fort uh, Hobridge Way, uh, sorry, Wal Walbridge Way, uh, Fort Couch Road. This is one of my shots, 1737 would become one of the four Super 17s. Uh, 1713 at uh, uh, Fort Couch Road. Drake Loop coming into Drake Loop. 
brake loop with a car in original corporate livery. There's 1730 again at its proper location. And uh, this is 1745, another car that uh, made it to 1993. Uh, it's, in the, it's in the last uh, PA Transit corporate livery. And this was my cross country vehicle. 1990. Rear end view at the uh, Drake Loop. This is Fort Couch Road on the South Hills Village portion of the line. South Hills Village. Coming down from South Hills Village Yard, uh, 1717, is, uh, this is a high dynamic range picture. Here's uh, retired cars at South Hills Village Yard that replaced South Hills Car House, 1984. This is uh, 1713, uh, the, the so-called terrible trolley got repainted in uh, the final PCC corporate livery. And these cars here on the right are, are all retired, but they've not been removed from the property. These are two brand new LRVs. They don't even have numbers yet. They were in the yard. This is 1984. Okay, tunnel bypass. Uh, okay, one of the lines that was kept uh, was this line over the uh, east end of Mount Washington, uh, over Warrington and Arlington Avenues, uh, and used when, uh, when needed, uh, when, the, when the Mount Washington Tunnel was shut down. Uh, it was a regular service line until 2007. I'm oh, sorry, 20, 2011. And uh, this, this is a map drawn on a Google map. Uh, I drew this line just kind of to represent what, what the line looked like. It, in LRV days and in PCC days, it would run into the subway uh, across the Panhandle Bridge, uh, and then it would loop loop around the subway, come back out, go back out on Arlington and Warrington. Okay, here's here's what Warrington Avenue looked like in uh, 1980. Uh, this is long before um, uh, the line got rebuilt. Now you can see how how very pleasant the overhead is. You know, uh, standard. A uh, way of hooking up overhead to uh, street light poles and uh, other poles. Uh, very, very charming scene. And then, then Pat rebuilt it to look like this. Uh, you, you might as well run a GG1 locomotive on this street.
Arlington and Warrington. Okay, uh, at this point, I'm going to see if I can rustle up some uh, North Shore Line uh, pictures. Uh, okay, so this is a pair of uh, 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 GE steeple cabs at uh, North Chicago Yard. Uh, the Ed Spitzer fo photo, I just picked this up. A slide and then this shot is uh Mil at Milwaukee Terminal. This is taken in 1956. Uh the train had just arrived from from uh Chicago. Uh but, uh, I guess it has about 45 minute layover, then it'll go back to Chicago. We can see you can see that. It had just arrived because it has marker lights on the back and the trolley pole is pointed towards the camera, which means it's uh, uh, go, uh, heading he heading as if it were continuing beyond Milwaukee. But the, uh, anyway, then this, this is a, another collected shot uh, showing the North, the Electroliner in uh, 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 on the Skokie cutoff. It's still using the uh, third rail and it'll put up its pole shortly. Uh, well, if this, it, it's train, I can't figure out if the train is going outbound or inbound. Uh, if it's going inbound, it's just going to stay on third rail all the way on the L. Uh, if it's going outbound, it'll put up the pole about halfway between here and uh, Skokie. Uh, so that's that's it for Chicago North Shore. Let, all right. Uh, there was, I had one picture that was out of order. I'll try to get to it in a minute. Okay, let me drag drag the folder over so you see guys see more whoops come on we're i i managed to spell monongahela right <laughs> Okay, let me tell you about the runaway. And, uh, now, what was interesting was I happened to be in Pittsburgh in 1987, a week before the runaway occurred. So I was able to do a lot of shooting. Uh, uh, and, uh, and then, then, then the wreck happened. Uh, what happened was car 1727 uh, lost its dynamic brakes going inbound through this Mount Washington tunnel, which is downhill. And so it ended up careening across Carson Street, making like it wanted to go over to Smithfield Bridge again. Uh, which it did for many years until 1984, 1985. Uh, but what happened was uh, PA Transit decided to retire all non-rewired 1700s on the spot. That left them with only 16 available PCCs to cover lines that went over the Overbrook line. Uh, they, they, uh, 
cars that were able to continue were all the 4,000s, which are, had been formerly 1700s, but rewired. And then four super 1700s, uh, as you can see, enumerated in the text. And the super 17s lasted to 1993. Most of the 4,000s lasted into 1999. Okay. Uh, okay, this, this map shows uh, the 52 Allentown line, which was abandoned, shows the old street running of the PCCs through downtown Pittsburgh. It also shows the, uh, come on, where did it go? She also shows the uh, little spur that, according to uh, one contributor, run uh, is opened on March 17th for St. Patrick's Day uh, to Penn Station. Okay, now the in, inbound, most inbound stop is Gateway Station. This is a loop station. Uh, car 1745 was a super 17, lasted in 1993. Uh, the mural on the wall was retained when the station was rebuilt as a double track station uh, to continue the line under the Allegheny River to the north to the north shore. Wood Street Station. This is car 1713, as repainted in Pittsburgh railway colors following uh, its time as a terrible trolley. This, pen, this is a steel plaza station. Uh, two LRVs at steel plaza. Uh, cars, trolleys ran over the Panhandle Bridge, which was a former Conrail and Pennsylvania Railroad line had crossed into Pittsburgh. There's an outbound LRV coming across. There's a high dynamic range picture. Station, station Square. Uh, the first station outside the uh, free fare zone. All the stations in the triangle area in the North Shore are free. And uh, also they pipe in classical music uh, 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 conduct that was performed by the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. There's a PCC at the low platform portion of the uh, station square station. Leaving uh, uh, station square going outbound. There's an LRV crossing the bridge in the background. 1768 is still in original corporate livery. The LRV come, had just come through the Mount Washington Tunnel. That's the Pittsburgh and Lake Erie Station building on the right. The Monongahela incline is on the left. There's the terrible trolley again. And peak, peeking its nose out of the inbound end of the Mount Washington Tunnel. 
Okay, this is a car coming from Steel Plaza Station to Penn uh, Penn Plaza Penn Station on the on the spur that's been abandoned. Yeah, at, at the station, leaving the station. In 2012, the uh, line was double tracked through Gateway Station and extended across the, uh, under the Allegheny River to North Shore. Uh, as you can see, the mural has been kept. This, this had previously been the outbound track. This is what Gateway Station looks like uh, from, from the street. This is a, a North Shore Station. This is a, a rebuilt Siemens LRV. This is a CAF LRV, CAF, a uh, Spanish company. You notice that there's a single uh, door for low level boarding and high level doors for uh, stations, high level stations. This is uh, at Allegheny Terminal. And Heinz Field, where the Pittsburgh Pirates play is in the background. Okay, uh, okay, all right. So uh, uh, this is called Unusual Paint Schemes and Unusual Trolleys. And also, uh, it also has the end. Mm. Thank, thank God. <laughs> okay. Um, so um, as, as I already mentioned, uh, these color schemes of, for most cars were set up front, middle, and back, like like that. Front, middle, and back. On, uh, uh, but uh, other some cars got very unusual paint schemes. Okay, here's one of them. Uh, Seventeen twenty-eight. Uh, uh, Approaching Castle Shannon uh, has a, a very broad blue diagonal stripe across its midsection. There it is again. This is at the South Hills Village, South Hills Junction Loop, uh, pulling into the car house. Book. A 1736 uh, uh, is uh, not in a corporate paint scheme, but uh, it was uh, pre-corporate. This, this shot was taken in 1985. Uh, so it has yellow um, below the windows and above the windows. Uh, 1739 was all blue, advertising a, a radio station. It's at uh, Glenbury on the uh, Overbrook line. Uh, 1742 was the Clark uh, candy, candy bar car. Coming in the Castle Shannon again. 1746 has a very attractive livery with uh, several broad stripes and uh, a few narrow stripes. It's called the French. Yeah. 
the French, French, sorry, the freight house shops uh, car. So it was advertising a, a shopping center. Uh, this is one of the Budweiser cards, 1745. Uh, 1745 became a uh, Super 17, lasted in 1993. You've seen pictures of it in uh, in the operating in the subway. 1751 was the other Budweiser car. This is at South Hills Village Yard. South, excuse me, South Hills Car House. Another shot of it this is uh, this is a Dormont loop. Uh, the car is actually backing out of the side track. Seventeen fifty four uh, has a very attractive livery on it. 1761's advertising uh, TV station KDKA. KDKA was the very first uh, uh, radio station in the United States. And one of the very, very few uh, broadcast stations which had a K prefix letter uh, uh, that was in the east. Another shot of KDKA car, 1761, cutting off a car coming off of the uh, uh, Mount Lebanon line. 1766 was the camouflage car. Uh, this probably was a uh, Steve Zabel shot, uh, I found it in my collection uh, on Flickr. I've been trying for years to get a slide of it, but I uh, have not been able to do so. 1767 uh, is in a very attractive uh, uh, burnt orange and white color scheme. Smithfield Bridge, 1791 is red, white, and blue uh, for the bicentennial. Uh, now we come to uh, this is oh this is the Mister Rogers car, 1796. Uh, and it has a even has a Tunerville trolley on it. Seventeen ninety nine was in Pittsburgh Railways livery. Is uh, approaching Alton stop. And three of the Air Electrics got rebuilt LRV style front ends. One of them was. 1779, uh, I don't remember the original car number. Um, this is at Dormont. 1781 was another one on in red and red livery. Wait. Right. Hey, uh, this is at South Hills Junction. It's nineteen seventy six. It was not. Uh, I I don't remember what car number it was originally. Okay, now we come to. 1794. This car was uh, 
um, originally 1603. Uh, it was rebuilt to look like a riverboat and it, they called it the triple tree trolley, which uh, the triple treats were a ride on the Monongahela incline, a ride on a real river boat, and a ride on the trolley. Uh, the trolley could not go through the Mount Washington tunnel because it wouldn't clear. Uh, so it had to use Arlington and Warrington. Uh, Earlier, you saw a picture of 1783 that was subbing for this car. And there's the back end of it at South Hills Junction. Okay, now we come to uh, Mod Desire, the psychedelic trolley, 1730. Uh, this is uh, Castle Shannon. This is at uh, Clearview Loop. Uh, this car was painted like this in 1975 and stayed this way until about 1983. Then it was painted uh, standard uh, uh, Geisenheimer uh, livery, uh, red, white, and red. Uh, and this is at uh, Bethel Park on, on the library line, coming out of the Mount Washington Tunnel outbound, uh, approaching South Hills Junction, cars pulling in actually. Rainy day shot on the Beachview Mount Lebanon line. Now we come to the terrible trolley, car 1713. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, it's painted up like a Pittsburgh Steelers helmet and honors Terry Bradshaw. Uh, uh, let's see uh, the years in which the Steelers won the Super Bowl, and uh, because because fans would wave terrible towels at Steelers games, uh, this car got nicknamed the Terrible Trolley, and it ran that way for many many years. Uh, this, this shot is at uh, McNeely uh, on on the Overbrook line. Uh, this is uh, approaching St. Anne's School on the rebuilt Drake line, South Hills Village, coming out of the Mount Washington Tunnel. This is my shot. And then uh, 1987, 1713, got rewired and uh, re-emerged as a Pittsburgh Railways livery car. This is a, shown at Castle Shannon. Uh, uh, South Hills Village. This is the rear end of it after it crossed uh, Ansonia Trestle at full foliage time. Then uh, it got the final corporate livery of uh, white with uh, colored stripes uh, and lasts since 1993. So not bad for a terrible trolley. Now we come to two shots that taken by my friend Glenn Rowe on the last day of PCC operation, September 5th, uh, 1999. Our first last slide had a PCC frame. 
two five gallon buckets and screaming out around it. Hey guys, anybody got something going? This is on the library line at Lytle. Simmons Loop. Uh, all three cards posed with different uh, uh, slogans in their roll sign era areas. So this is the end. Peter, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you for coming out, guys. I yeah, hope you had a good time. Uh, not, uh, I, I, I didn't hear any snickering, which is a good thing. <laughs> no, no, absolutely not.